In this video, I'm going to talk about the innovation pattern of the urinary bladder, which is very important to understand. So the bladder is innovated by the vesicle plexus, an intricate plexus of uh, nerves uh, surrounding the, the base of the bladder. And this vesicle plexus receives input from the inferior hypogastric, sorry, the inferior hypogastric plexuses that contain the parasympathetic as well as sympathetic, sympathetic fibers. Okay, to understand this complicated arrangement, it's really important for us to understand or to have the idea about the two types of plexuses we are having in this region. So here in front of you in this elementary drawing, this is the abdominal aorta, the supium mesenteric artery, which is one of the ventral branches of abdominal aorta, the inferior mesenteric artery, and then the aorta bifurcates into common iliacs, and then the common iliacs are dividing further into, into their terminal branches, the internal iliac, which is coming towards the, the pelvic cavity, and the external iliac, which would be going down, heading to the thigh or the lower limb, okay? So this is just uh, an overview. And on either side of the aorta, because the aorta is located in front of the vertebral column, so you have to imagine that the vertebral column is just inside the board. And on either side of the vertebral column, we have the, a chain of sympathetic ganglia, you know, the paravertebral ganglia, the chain of ganglia of sympathetic system, okay? So this plexus, which is, has been formed, a plexus is a mesh. It's a network of fine fibers. So we are talking about the plexus of nerves at this moment. And both, uh, like in this plexus, the nerves, the types of fibers are both autonomic type, sympathetic and parasympathetic, has nothing to do with the sensory or with the central nervous system. Uh, it's all, all about the, the autonomic nervous system because we are going to talk about the viscera or viscous that is governed by autonomic nervous system. Okay? All right. So this is because it's closed by relationship with the inferior mesenteric artery. This is the inferior mesenteric plexus, also known as yeah, it's the inferior mesenteric plexus or hypogastric plexus, superior hypogastric plexus, all right? Here, uh, you can see these black fibers. So this plexus is receiving sympathetic fibers, the, the uh, uh, postganglionic sympathetic fibers, because they will be synapsing in the ganglion and then the postsynaptic or uh, sympathetic fiber or postganglionic sympathetic fiber will be emerging out of the ganglia. So you remember that uh, there in the thoracic region where the abdomen, like where the diaphragm, the domes of diaphragms are placed, we have uh, three nerves which are descending on either side of the rib cage. And, uh, on the rib cage, and they are contributing into the formation of another ganglion, which is not shown over here, uh, sorry, the plexus over there, the celiac plexus, the supium mesenteric plexus, and of course the renal plexus. So all these plexuses are uh, made up of autonomic fibers. So three nerves, the, the greater splanchnic nerve, the lesser splanchnic nerve, and the least splanchnic nerve. So we're not concerned when we talk about the uh, the hypogastric plexus, we're not concerned with the uh, uh, greater splanchnic nerve. It's just the lesser splanchnic nerve, which is T11, the least splanchnic nerve, which is T12. Uh, they are coming and uh, you know crossing the uh, the ganglion and postganglionic fibers in the form of lesser splanchnic and least splanchnic, which is T11, T12, and then the upper two lumbar nerves, the L1 and L2. So T11, 12, L1, and L2 will be the fibers are postganglionic sympathetic fibers, and they are coming and you know meshing around the inferior uh, mesenteric artery and the hypogastric plexus. Okay. Okay, uh, supia hypogastric plexus. So uh, and then the supia hypogastric plexus is, you know, the is sending uh, extensions down to the level where the common iliac is dividing, like at the pelvic 
inland has been forming the inferior hypogastric plexuses on both sides. So the inferior hypogastric plexuses, they are receiving other than these sympathetic fibers from T11, 12, L1, and L2, there are fibers of parasympathetic division. So uh, the nerves which are emerging from uh, you know, S2, S3, and S4 level, the, the lateral horns of S2, 3, 4, they will give off the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers. They will be traveling as the pelvic splanchnic nerves. The, the root value of those nerves would be S2, S3, and S4. These pelvic splanchnic nerves are also known as nervi erigenti. Okay, so they will be coming in and together with these sympathetic fibers, postganglionic sympathetic fibers, the parasympathetic fibers will also blend and then they will form these, you know, inferior hypogastric plexuses and, the, and then the vesicle plexus is, you know, driving all its fibers through the inferior hypogastric plexuses, okay? In fear, the, the vesicle plexus is a, is a blend of sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Now we will talk about what these fibers are doing. You know, remember that the, the, uh, the wall of the bladder is made out of a very great muscle, a smooth muscle, detrusor muscle. So the, the, uh, the, the parasympathetic fibers uh, of pelvic splanchnic nerves will be innovating the detrusor muscle and also the internal internal urethral sphincter okay at the neck of the bladder so as a result of uh, the uh, activation of the pelvic splanchnic nerves there would be contraction of detrusor muscle and relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. So if I say that the, the, the parasympathetic pelvic splanchnic nerves are the nerve of emptying, I won't be wrong, they, are, they would be emptying the bladder, they would be contracting the detrusor muscle to thrust out the urine. Okay, by relaxing the internal anal uh, internal urethral sphincter. By the way, uh, in males there is an external urethral sphincter, and also in females, of course, the external the fibers of external urethral sphincters they are not as of smooth nature. They are skeletal muscle fibers, so they are innervated by a nerve which is known as pudendal nerve, and and they are under our voluntary control and. With thanks to Lord that the external urethral sphincter as well as the external anal sphincter they are under our voluntary control okay while the internal urethral sphincter is made up of smooth fibers it's not under our control okay now the sympathetic fibers what they would be doing they would be conserving they would be retaining they would be relaxing the detrusor muscle and contracting the internal anal sphincter. So the internal anal sphincter will be, you know, squeezed and will be closed, and the detrusor muscle will be relaxing. So the rugi will start disappearing as the urine is trickling down and getting deposited in the ur in the bladder. And by the way, the normal capacity of a normal bladder in an adult is from somewhere between 130 milliliters up to 500 milliliters of urine. And at times, in special occasions, it can hold up to, you know, double the, the quantity, maybe around 800 milliliters up to 900 milliliters of urine. Okay, so, so the nerve of retain, retention is the sympathetic while the nerve of emptying is the parasympathetic. And from where these nerves are coming? Through the vesicle plexus, and vesicle plexus has been formed by the fibers which are descending down from the inferior hypogastric plexuses. Okay, uh, as far as the uh, sensation is concerned, uh, the sensory uh, output or input is concerned, the, uh, both the sympathetic and parasympathetic limbs of the vesicle plexus, they are having uh, the afferent or the sensory pathway, you know. So the neurons, uh, 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 afferent neurons, cell bodies, uh, when it comes to the parasympathetic limb of the plexus, they are located 
they are supposed to be located, and they are in the, uh, the, the sacral segments of S2, S3, and S4, okay? So the, the afferent fibers will travel through the pelvic splanchnic nerve in case of the, the stretching, over-stretching of the bladder. So I'm talking about the pain pathway also, okay? So the pain anything uh, uh, related to any bladder pathology will be radiating to these root values like S2, S3, and S4, like there would be uh, the pain in the pelvic region and the perineal region, which is uh, sharing the same root value. Okay, while the afferent uh, component of the sympathetic system, its, its cell bodies, uh, the neuron cell bodies, are lying in the T11, T12, L1, and L2 segments of the spinal cord. So the, the pain originated or originating from the bladder can also be felt in the, uh, the, the region which are supplied by you know the uh, they can the, the pain can be referred to the lumbar region, also to the inguinal region because we have the L1 and L2, and, and into the thigh. Okay, because we do have uh, the L2 component coming, the lumbar two is coming to the femoral nerve. Okay, so the the referred pain from the bladder. Uh, when we talk about the sympathetic afferent system or afferent fibers, can be uh, felt in the lumbar region, in the inguinal region, and also in the upper thigh region. Okay, while in the parasympathetic limb, the afferent fibers, because they are sharing the same root value, S2, S3, and S4, which is the, the root value for pudendal also, so we will be able to feel the pain. That pain can be referred into the pelvic floor and also the perennial region. Now, uh, before, uh, you know, finishing up the innovation pattern, I have to talk about the micturation reflex. So now we know that there are stretch receptors, there are pain receptors located in the body or in the ball of the uh, uh, urinary bladder. So what happens as the bladder fills with the urine, the stretch information, uh, it just uh, associated with the bladder fullness from stretch receptors in the bladder wall runs with the pelvic splanchnic nerves. So these are the pelvic splanchnic nerves in the hypogastric, inferior hypogastric plexus. And they serve as the afferent limb because they are taking the information out of the bladder towards the center, towards the autonomic center, okay? So they will be acting as the afferent limb of micturation reflex. While again, the pelvic splanchnic nerves are distributed to the detrusor muscle, so they will be bringing back the command to the detrusor muscle. So I, by that I mean to say the pelvic splanchnic nerves are having both the afferent and efferent limbs of the micturation reflex, okay? And uh, this is how the, once the, the command has reached the detrusor muscle, it will be contracted, the internal urethral sphincter will be, uh, will be relaxed, and the, the process of voiding can happen, permitting the circumstances.